hitting an issue near and dear to my heart. Uh, T-cell lymphomas, uh, as uh, uh, we know, are really bad diseases amongst, uh, the, large, amongst the non Hodgkin's lymphomas, and the last five years have been extraordinary for breakthroughs. Uh, the development of HDAC inhibitors now globally around the world, there are three approved, two in the U.S., Romadepsin and Belinistat, Chitamide in China. Uh, prolotrexate, of course, was the first of the drugs approved for relapse disease, and now there are very promising studies coming out of Asia uh, that are registration directed for prolotrexate uh, in uh, China and Japan that really seem to document uh, highly favorable response rates. And of course, antibody drug conjugates like brintuximab, vidoitin, targeting CD30. So um, I think that the field is really poised to um, make that innovative leap forward where we can maybe start to study uh, treatment programs that are not totally predicated on uh, conventional, nonspecific cytotoxic chemotherapy. Uh, I've, I've always been a little critical of adding these new drugs to chop backbones. Uh, I and almost all of my colleagues uh, talk about how inferior CHOP chemotherapy is in T-cell lymphoma compared to our experiences in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. So I, I challenge the logic that says we're going to take a good drug and add it to a bad combination and now all of a sudden get something spectacular. So I think the more innovative way that we really need to explore is how to leverage these new drugs that seem to exhibit a very interesting lineage-specific activity in T-cell lymphoma. Uh, the HDAC inhibitors and prolotrexate are essentially inert in B-cell lymphoma. And we need to sort of look at those combinations. So we've uh, presented uh, recently at ASH and will be presenting again this year and have now completed several phase one studies looking at combinations of prolotrexate and romadepsin and uh, other studies looking at combinations of hypomethylating agents and HDAC inhibitors. The T-cell lymphomas seem to be characterized by gross defects in various epigenetic operations uh, that revolve around methylation, so DNMT3, TET, IDH2. So these are the first studies to ever explore the impact of hypomethylating agents in T-cell lymphoma in combination. And our early phase one data suggest that not only is it feasible and safe, but the activity we're getting in heavily treated patients is really quite remarkable. So we're now expanding those studies to broad international phase two studies, working with Dr. Kim in Samsung, South Korea, Dr. Zanzani in Bologna, where we're now putting together a program where we're going to try and vet these uh, phase two single arm, phase two studies in T-cell lymphoma. And we're now uh, proposing and uh, opening shortly some triplet studies where we're going to be looking at the addition of immune checkpoint inhibitors on these backbones to try to create a novel R-CHOP equivalent uh, that gets us away from CHOP-based chemotherapy in the disease. So I think uh, the future of T-cell lymphoma is looking brighter and brighter. Uh, we still need new drugs uh, on the horizon. It's not clear what those are at the moment, but I think for the immediate short term, combinations of these novel drugs with an established legacy of activity in the disease are really going to form uh, some exciting new ways to treat the disease down the road.